Hi. Hi. Welcome to this video presentation by Anita Prinzi and Dirk van der Poel. The objective of this presentation is to highlight the benefits of applying the principles of random forests, a technique developed by Leo Breiman, to other methods. We will illustrate uh, this generalization effort by applying it to two methods, random multinomial logic and random naive base. Anita Prinzi will start off by introducing to you the methodology. Later, I will get back to you with an application in analytical CRM or customer intelligence. After that, Anita will get back to you uh, and formulate some conclusions. I will now leave the floor to Anita Prinzi. Thank you, Dirk. Before introducing to you the new random multinomial logits and the new random naive base, allow me to briefly review random forest. Random forest is building a forest of decision trees. It's a methodology which was introduced by Leo Priman in 2001 with a major aim to decrease the instability of the original decision trees. Decision trees are unstable because only minor changes in the training data sample are res resulting in major changes in the result of the decision trees. The instability of the decision tree is resulting in a high variance, which in turn results in a higher prediction error. Please recall the definition of prediction error. Prediction error is constituted out of three components. Firstly, there is the irreducible bias, there is the statistical bias, and there is the variance. In order to reduce the error of any methodology, we need to reduce the statistical bias and the variance. Given the definition of prediction error, it's clear that if we want to reduce the prediction error of decision trees, we must find a way to reduce its variance. Hasty, Tipshirwani and Friedman have suggested that bagging would be an excellent way to reduce the variance of, for instance, decision trees. And that is actually what Breiman is suggesting. Breiman is also employing bagging as a way to reduce the variance of the original decision trees. Bagging is the acronym standing for bootstrap aggregation. This means that each decision tree will be built on a bootstrap sample. A bootstrap sample is drawn from the original training data set, which means that instances are drawn with replacement from the original data set. Each bootstrap sample will contain approximately two thirds of the original data set. Each decision tree is as such built on a different bootstrap sample. In order to aggregate the results of the different decision trees built on different bootstrap samples, we will need a certain approach to combine the results, for instance by using voting. Bryman is using this random observation selection in tandem with random feature selection. This means that at each node of the decision tree, the optimal splitting variable is selected out of a subspace of the original feature space. More specifically, the optimal splitting variable is selected out of lowercase m variables out of the total feature space containing capital M features. The goal of this random feature selection is to increase the, ro the noise robustness of the methodology. Let me clarify noise robustness. Breiman defines noise robustness as robustness to many input variables, with each one containing only a small amount of information. Now let me show you visually how the random forest methodology looks like. Random forest starts with a dataset containing features X and target Y. From this dataset, T bootstrap samples are drawn. On each of these bootstrap samples, a decision tree will be grown using CART methodology. Let us assume that we start with bootstrap sample with t equals 1. We build a decision tree on this bootstrap sample. And at each node of the decision tree, the optimal splitting variable is selected out of a random subspace of the original feature space. This delivers a decision tree for bootstrap sample t. And actually, every instance in the bootstrap sample is assigned a predicted class. This whole procedure is repeated for every bootstrap sample which we have drawn from the original data set. So let us assume that t equals 2. Again, a decision tree is built on this bootstrap sample. 
And again, the splitting at each node is selected out of a random subset of the original feature space. This again delivers a decision tree, but this time built on a second bootstrap sample. And again, every instance of the second bootstrap sample is assigned a predicted class. This procedure is repeated for every bootstrap sample drawn from the dataset. In order to classify an instance using the random forest, we need to put the input vector down the t-trees in the forest. Each decision tree is voting for the predicted class of the instance. In order to obtain the final predicted class using the ensemble, we use majority voting. So we classify an instance into the class having the most votes over the all trees t in the forest.